Is before me. I can only imagine. I can only imagine. To be surrounded by your glory. is imagine at this point in time God. what a beautiful sight it will be thank you Jesus hallelujah the Bible says the whole earth is full of the glory of God at that time the glory of God will be in the presence of God's glory will be in God's glory hallelujah hallelujah glory be to God I can only imagine Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Will I dance for you, Jesus? Will I mando shake Will I sing? Will I be able? My God, hallelujah, I can only imagine. I can only imagine. We can cry out. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, my Lord and my King. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. My God and my King, hallelujah. You are worthy, hallelujah. You are mighty, hallelujah. Oh God, what a day when I see your presence, my God. If I can't speak, then my spirit will speak for me. My God and my King, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. God, you provide redemption for your people. You have ordained your covenant, mighty Father, God, forever. Holy and awesome is his name. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father, we just bless your name. As the song writer says, I can only imagine. I can only imagine what the presence of the Lord will be like. I can only imagine what my response will be. I can only imagine what heaven will be like. Glory be to God, but we're thankful that the Bible has given us some information that we can go on. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You know, as I was preparing <clears throat> to come on tonight, I've had, you know, several experiences. And what the Lord brought home to my spirit is this. There are so many things in this life we can experience. It, it can break you, my God. It can discourage you. It can dishearten you. It can prevent you from wanting to go on. Glory be to God. But I am reminded of the scripture in the book of Corinthians that tells me that if only in this life, I have hope in Christ, then I am most I'm a man most miserable, glory be to God. So therefore, hallelujah, I put not my hope in this world, in the people around me, in the things it has to offer, but I put my hope according to the scripture in the blessed hope, hallelujah. My hope is a blessed hope. My hope is to see God someday. My hope is to be in the presence of God. My hope is for God to tabernacle with me, radio Santa, for him to be my king and for me to be his son. Glory be to God. My hope is to be in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I want to encourage somebody tonight. Despite what is happening in the here and now, put your hope in God. Put your hope in God. Do not put your hope in things on this earth and people and individuals. Put your hope in God. Because there is one thing. The Bible says God ordains his covenant forever. The Bible said God honors his word above his name. The Bible says the promises of God, they are yea and amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So tonight we are in the second to last chapter of the book of, of Revelation. I want to um, in, invite and welcome everybody on tonight. Glory be to God. We're almost there. We're almost finished. And it's a time of rejoicing, but yet it's such a solemn time because we're going to be seeing that God is making everything new. Whatever existed before, God is making it all new. Sin has been judged. And now it's the way for the kingdom. The final manifestation of the kingdom is what we're going to be looking on tonight. Glory be to God. I hope you have your Bibles ready. So please take them out and let us turn to Revelation chapter 21, and I'm reading from the NIV. Hallelujah. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we discussed uh, a couple nights ago, we will not be spending eternity up above. 
The Bible says that heaven as we come to know about it and the earth as we have come to know about it will no longer be, uh, it will no longer be as we have known it, but God is doing a new thing. The old heavens and the old earth, they will pass away, glory be to God, and make way, hallelujah, for the new heaven and the new earth, glory be to God. So where will you be spending eternity? It will not be up above, but it will be right here on heaven. Glory be to God. The Bible tells us that John saw the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven, from God above. Hallelujah. I want us to look on two uh, words in verse one. The word see. We have looked on that word a number of times, and we know that it means instability, right? In, in our Jewish teachings, C also means um, something that they fear, the unknown as well. So now we're seeing that every bit of instability, everything that man feared, Everything that was unknown to man will no longer be. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The, the uh, word Jerusalem, he's describing the kingdom in its final state. And what is the name of that kingdom? The new Jerusalem. When we look at what Jerusalem means, or the, the uh, Jewish word or the Hebrew word, it's made up of two components. The first component means inherit. It means to inherit. And the second component means shalom or fulfillment. So if we put that all together, we see that the new Jerusalem is what the people of God will be inheriting. They are inheriting the fulfillment of God's will. What is, the, 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 what is God's will for his people? To dwell among them. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We sing this song all the while. Dwell among us. Dwell among us. Dwell among us, God, dwell among us. Well, in the book of Revelation, in chapters 21, it tells us that God, there's coming a time when God will indeed dwell among his people. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We spoke about the bride already, and we know that um, Jesus had said, you believe in God? Remember he said? He's going away to prepare a place for us. And if he goes away, we will come back. And he says that in his father's house, there is many mansions. And we're going to be seeing the extent of that mansion, the extent of the father's house tonight. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Reading on verse 3. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look. God's dwelling place is now among the people of God, and he will dwell with them. Glory be to God. So some Bibles might use the word for dwelling, tabernacle. And what that means is that God's very presence is going to be in the midst of people. God's desire is to be among his people, taking us back to Genesis. The Bible tells us that God would come down in the cool of the day and he would meet with Adam. Glory be to God. When we look at Israel, we saw that the presence of God was in the midst of, of Israel. God has always wanted to be in the presence of his people. Hallelujah. And now we see that with the judgment of sin, God, the holy God, is able to dwell with mankind. If we look at the book of Isaiah chapter 6, all through and previously throughout the scripture, it has been known that if man sees God, then that man will die. But there is a provision, glory be to God, 
for a man to see the face of God and to still live. And what we have seen throughout the book of Revelation is that is the judgment God deals with the sin matter, which is the issue. And then he will reveal himself to us in his fullness. Glory be to God. The Bible tells us we are reading um, from verse three as well. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Now, if you weren't excited before for the new Jerusalem to come on earth, this is why you ought to be excited. God will wipe away every tears from their eyes. There will be no more death, no more sin. We know that sin is connected to death. There will be no more mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. Glory be to God. Everything that was connected, hallelujah, with sin, our crying, pain, mourning, uh, all of that, God has judged. Glory be to God. And now the scripture is telling us that the old things, hallelujah, they are passed away. In the book of Isaiah, God says, see, I am doing something new. This is something new of a different proportion that we have never seen before. Sin will be eradicated. Sin will be eliminated. Glory be to God. I won't have to cry another tear. Hallelujah. I won't have to feel my God and his sense of mourning because the glory of the Lord will be there and there will be no existence of sin. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The Bible says in verse 5, he who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down for these words are trustworthy and true. Now, all throughout the book of Revelations, we have heard a number of different voices. We have heard the voice of Jesus. We have heard the voice of John. We have heard the voice of angels. We have heard many other voices. We are hearing the voice of God now and he's saying, listen, I am making everything new. Glory be to God. I am making everything new. Glory be to God. The old things, the former things, they are no more. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I want God to make uh, something new in my life. Hallelujah. I want God to take the former things. Hallelujah. The old things uh, and cast them away. Hallelujah. And make something new. Uh, make something new of my life. Something new of my spirit. Something new. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Behold, I am making everything new. Let me correct that. He didn't only say something. He said everything. Hallelujah. And at that point, glory be to God, our redemption will be so full and so complete. Glory be to God. Then he said, write these, write these words down. They are trustworthy and true. We know that from their coming from the mouth of God, there is no question about uh the fact that we can trust them, hallelujah. He said to me, it is done. I am alpha, I am the omega, I am the beginning, hallelujah, and the end. Glory be to God, we have heard this said already. Jesus on the cross, the Bible says, he said it is finished and he gave up the ghost, hallelujah. What was finished, hallelujah. The work of redemption was finished, glory be to God. It was finished to that point. And now God is saying the fullness of redemption, the fullness of it all, it is now finished, hallelujah, glory be to God. He says, I am Alpha and I am Omega. That is the, the, the first letter in the Greek alphabet and the last one, hallelujah. He's the beginning, hallelujah. 
and he's the ending. What is that saying? He is in everything. He is everything. He is the all in all. He was and is and is to come. Everything, hallelujah, is contained in him. From the beginning to the end, wherever you stop, wherever you start and finish, hallelujah, the sum total of it all is God Almighty. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The Bible says, to the thirsty, I will give water without cost. Now, we know that water means is connected to life. So without a cost, God is saying, the cost has already been paid. There's no price to you. Without a cause, if you thirst after righteousness, if you thirst after righteousness, come. God is giving water without a cause from the springs of the water of life. Hallelujah. The Bible says those who are victorious will inherit all of this. And I will be their God and they will be my children. Now remember when we looked at Revelation 2 and 3, those messages to the seven churches, he kept saying, those that are victorious, those that are victorious, those that are victorious, those that are victorious will inherit the New Jerusalem, the presence of God, the glory of God, hallelujah, the fullness of their redemption, praise be to God. And the Bible says that we'll be, he will be our God, but we will be his children. Now, children and sons, sonship, it is speaking about that passage that spoke about the spirit of adoption. And it says that we are joint heirs with Christ Jesus. So it is speaking about us as if we are children of the most high God. So we will inherit glory be to God, that which is of the kingdom, hallelujah. And there is another scripture that says that the creation is waiting for the manifestation, hallelujah of the sons of God to, 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 to God to manifest, hallelujah. And now we are seeing that creation itself has even been redeemed. Glory be to God, hallelujah. Reading on verse eight, but the cowardly, those who are fearful, the unbelieving, the vile, those who are repulsive to God, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Now we looked on this already. So what is the Bible telling us? That all the people that fall in this category, they will have no part in the kingdom of God. Glory be to God. They will be consigned to hell and they will be living in eternity in a painful state. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Not only will they be living, um, the Bible tells us the fire will not quench, but there's also something about being away from the presence of God. I don't know if anybody has ever felt it. You, no matter what you do, you're doing this and you're doing that, you're achieving, but there is just this longing in your soul and you don't know what the longing is. The longing is your soul telling you that it needs your savior. It needs to be connected with the one that created you. Glory be to God, hallelujah. So no matter no matter what it is that you do, no matter where it is that you go, no matter what accomplishment, there will still be an inner longing because the soul longs to be with the Savior. The soul longs to be with the Master. Glory be to God. And so that one that is in uh, that pit of hell, hallelujah, will still be longing to be with God. How do I know this? The Bible even tells us 
us about the story of Lazarus and the rich man. And it tells us how Lazarus was miserable here on the earth, but the rich man enjoyed all that this world could bring. And when they both died, the Bible says the, the Lazarus went to be, glory be to God in the bosom, hallelujah, of, of Abraham. And the rich man went in hell and he, he there was a gulf. So let me stop on this point. People are dreaming and saying that dead, this dead person and that dead person visit. No such thing. Nobody can visit us from the dead. It's a familiar spirit, but moving on along. We didn't come to discuss that tonight, but I thought I just needed to drop it in there. So the Bible tells us of this man's experience. He wanted Lazarus to assist him. Glory be to God. He was looking up in heaven and seeing what Lazarus was experiencing. Hallelujah. So it tells me that they understand. When you're in hell, you'll be able to understand that, hey, I could have been up there if only I had listened to the gospel. If only I had uh, accepted Jesus Christ. If only I wasn't this, that strong. Come on, glory be to God. Hallelujah. So much so that the rich man said, all right, send Lazarus to warn my family members. Hallelujah. But the Bible says he was told they have the prophets. They have those that will preach the word to them. So my, my caution to somebody tonight, you have the prophet, you have the pastor, you have the Bible, the word is there. There is no excuse, glory be to God, hallelujah. Looking on, um, we're going to move to uh, verse 9. We spoke about the second death already. Moving on to verse 9. Now we're going to be seeing a description of what heaven looks like. You know, they have this old song, heaven is better than this. Oh, what joy and bliss. And then they say, I'm going to walk those streets of glory by and by. I'm going to walk those streets of glory. I'm going to sing redemption story. I'm going to walk those streets of glory by and by. Hallelujah. Verse 9. One of the seven angels who had the seven bows of the seven last plagues came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. Now, why is it that at this point we are seeing one of those very same angels that were participating in the bowl judgment. And it is said that it is to show us that there is a connection between judgment and the kingdom. And this is the truth of scripture. In order for there to be holiness, glory be to God, there has to be judgment, judgment against sin, hallelujah, and those that refuse to submit themselves to God and give themselves over to sin. And when the sin matter is dealt with, then that brings and make way for the fullness of the kingdom of God to come, hallelujah. Verse 10 tells us, and he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the holy city coming down from God. It shone with the glory of God and its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel, like jasper, clear as a crystal. Now, one of the key characteristics of the kingdom of God, despite all the glitter and the gold that will be mentioned afterwards, one of the chief characteristics of the kingdom of God is the glory of God. Hallelujah. And we'll see how the glory of God plays out in the rest of the scripture. Verse 12. I had, I had, it had a great high wall with 12 gates and with 12 angels at the gates. 
on the gates were, were written the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. Hallelujah. Now, Israel's name is on the 12 gates. Now, gates we know means access. So a gate allow you to enter in if it's open or it prevents access if it is closed. Now, what is this text telling us? If we go back to uh, the book of Genesis, Genesis 12, remember God said this to Abraham. He told him to go from his country, from his people and his father's house to a land that he will show him and that he's going to make him into a great nation and his name will be great and that he will be a blessing. But I want you to listen to this part. I will bless those who bless you. Whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples of the earth will be blessed through you. Glory be to God. So Israel was supposed to be the channel of blessing to the whole earth. Hallelujah. And how were they going to do this? By showing the whole earth their God. Hallelujah. And if we realize that the, the, the Messiah we serve is a Jewish Messiah, glory be to God, or Jesus came through Israel, hallelujah. So the Bible tells us that the gates will have the 12, the names of the 12 tribes. So Israel is very important in the kingdom. And remember, again, we spoke about the number 12. The number 12 is important. It means God's people. It's connected to the people of God. And so even in this time, I know there are several different things going on regarding Israel. We ought to seek and hear what God says and what the scripture says and be guided accordingly because the bible already tells us that if it we should always pray for the peace of jerusalem glory be to god and the bible tells us that if we bless the people of god then the, then we will be blessed hallelujah so it is a wrong thing hallelujah for us to disrespect and to dishonor the people of god whether they be of israel or of of or Gentiles, hallelujah. We ought to bless God's people because in blessing God's people, there is a blessing, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The Bible says in verse 12, it had a great high wall and 12 gates. We spoke about that already. And with 12 gates, 12 angels at the gates on... The, Ooh, I am having difficulty reading. Verse 13, there were three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, and three on the west. The wall of the city had 12 foundations. So th this is also saying to us that um, the city of God is founded upon the people of God, glory be to God. And on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Let me read that again, because this is important. The wall of the city had 12 foundations, and on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. So what is this saying to us? The apostles, Jesus' apostles, they were the foundation of the kingdom, glory be to God. And so, hallelujah, were their teachings, glory be to God. Follow me to the book of Acts, hallelujah, verse 2. What was the teaching of the apostles of God, hallelujah? We read verse 38, Peter, we know the story of Peter, and we know the story of Pentecost very well, but we sometimes neglect these little things. The Bible tells us, verse 38, Peter replied, or let me jump up, um, verse 36, 35, the Lord 
said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were caught to their hearts. Hallelujah. Nobody is being caught radio sata anymore when they hear of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. It is like it is a household, a household thing, a household name. People walking around with chains of, of Jesus on a cross. I want to tell somebody, Jesus is no longer on the cross. He got off that cross many moons ago. He is risen. Hallelujah. He is risen and he is in heaven right now and he's waiting for the opportune time to come back, my God and my King as judge. Glory be to God. The Bible says when the people heard this, they were caught to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. What was the message of the apostles? In another part in the book of Acts, it was said, God wants to give you times of refreshing. Hallelujah. What was the, the message of the apostles? The message was that of redemption. The message was that of repentance. Hallelujah. So we see that the kingdom, my God and my king, it is built. Its foundation is on the redemptive message the power of the blood of Jesus, the power of the redemption that Jesus himself has brought forth. Hallelujah. That is the message of the apostles. Glory be to God. And that is the foundation of the kingdom of heaven. Verse 15, the angel who talked with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city, and these couple of verses are just going to be talking about measurement, so we understand what the city is, how the city is shaped, its gates and its walls. Verse 16, the city was laid out like a square, <clears throat> as long as it was wide, the med he measured the city with a rod and found it to be 12,000 stadia in length, and as wide and as high as it was long. The angel measured the wall using human measurement. It was 144 cubic thick. Now, this is kind of odd because Bible is saying the angel measured the wall. He's measuring the city of God. So of course, this is a, a divine act that only uh, a divine being can do. But yet still he's using human um, measurement. Exactly. God is, re God is so specific. Glory be to God. He's using human measurement. And there's a theory that uh, what this piece of the text is telling us is that uh, in this new Jerusalem, men and angel will have a similar perspective, glory be to God. Their, 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 their minds and their will will be towards doing the bidding of God. The Bible tells us that he makes his, his servants fire, glory be to God, and that angels are his ministering spirit. So hallelujah, every time we see the picture in heaven, we see what angels are doing. And in somehow, shape and form, the text is trying to connect the two so that we will see what uh, from an angel's perspective and a human perspective, more or less a combination or a simulation of both. Hallelujah. So we won't be look up there looking for, oh, I wonder where my husband is. I wonder where my sister is. You'd be too busy. Hallelujah. Looking at the things of God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The Bible says the wall was made of jasper, the city of pure gold as pure as glass hallelujah 
and that's where the, those songs come from. I want to walk those streets of, of glory and uh, the golden street and the golden this and the golden that. Hallelujah. Verse 19. The foundations of the wall were decorated with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation was Jasper, the second Sapphire, the third gate and fourth Emerald, the fifth Onyx, the sixth Ruby, the seventh Chrysolite, the eighth Beryl, the ninth Topaz, the tenth Turquoise, the eleventh Jacinth, and the twelfth Amethyst. Now, that was a mouthful. All of those precious stones. Where have we seen that before, Bible scholars? Ting, 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 ting. We have seen it in the book of Exodus. Remember, God had made garments for the priests. And the priest was supposed to wear on his heart um, his breastplate that had all of these stones in it and all of these stones 12 stones represented each one of the tribes of israel what was the purpose of that hallelujah the bible says that when the priest hallelujah entered into the presence of god he carried my god and my king the people on his heart with him hallelujah glory be to god my god and my king as a priest, Mando Shekatariosa, when we enter the presence of God, we carry the people that are under my God, our covering, the people that have entrusted themselves to our leadership. We carry them on our hearts. We carry them into the presence of God. Therefore, my God and my King, there should be nothing, hallelujah, that we do outside of the will of God for that one that is supposed to be on our heart hallelujah but we find that most time hallelujah i don't know what is being done we carry the people in our head and on our emotions and therefore we make oh uh, my god wrong judgments wrong prior wrong oh uh, my god um representation hallelujah for those said people hallelujah because we're not carrying them where God said we ought to carry them. We're not carrying them in that in that 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 place where God is supposed to be seated. So therefore, the will of God for these people and the, and our will is aligned. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So, what does that have to do with the New Jerusalem? The foundations of the wall is built on the people of God. God has the heart of the people in the very structure of the kingdom. Glory be to God. The Bible says there'll be no more tears. There'll be no more pain. There'll be no more weeping. There'll be no more sorrow. In other words, God has got us. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Verse 22. I did not see a temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. Now, why did the scripture mention this? The purpose of the temple is, well, it has many purposes. But one of the main activities that was taking place in the temple is sacrifice atoning for sins hallelujah so the bible already tells us that god already judged that so there'll be no need for a temple because the matter of sin has already been dealt with and when it, we talk about the presence of god god is there for for us to approach hallelujah glory be to god so the bible says there'll be no physical temple but god and the lamb themselves will be the temple hallelujah glory be to god hallelujah so verse 23 the city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it for the glory of god gives its light 
and the lamb is its lamb is its lamb so the glory of god the lamb which is a light unto our feet that will be the glory of the word will be so bright that sun and moon have no place in this kingdom because we will not be walking or seeing by something up in the heavens, but we'll be walking in the light of God. Hallelujah. We'll be walking in the glory of God. Hallelujah. I am so excited. Hallelujah. I don't know about anybody else, but I can speak for myself. What a privilege it will be when I am walking and God himself is just the one that is showing me the way, physically showing me the way, physically enlightening my part, my God and my King. The word is now manifest and the word is guiding my steps. Glory be to God. Verse 24, the nations will walk by its light and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. On no day, its gates ever will be shut for there will be no more night. What is that saying to us? There'll be no more darkness. There'll be no more sin. Hallelujah. The glory and the honor of the nations will be brought into it. Remember, there's a text in, in Isaiah that says the gates will not be shut, but the gates will be opened so that the glory of nations will be brought in. Brought in. Hallelujah. And the final verse, nothing impure will ever enter it nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. No sin, hallelujah. No sin, no sin can enter into this place. Glory be to God. The only way in the kingdom is if your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Now we understand what John says when he says that Jesus is the way. Glory be to God. The only way to enter the kingdom is to come by Jesus. Hallelujah. Is to accept that he is the Christ. Is to accept the atoning sacrifice of the blood. The only the way to enter the kingdom is to walk through redemption, is to be redeemed, glory be to God, by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The Bible tells us, I'm going to close with this, Isaiah 55. It's an invitation that has been issued to people or to whom the book was written, but it's an invitation for all. Come all who are thirsty, come to the waters, glory be to God, and you have no money, come and buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk, without money and without cost. In other words, there is, God is providing the sustenance, that thing that is necessary for life, our water, our milk, fine things such as wine, hallelujah, is providing it without cost. Why spend your money on what is not bread? Why labor on what does not satisfy? There is too many of us that are laboring. Glory be to God and that thing that we are laboring in. And as I am speaking to you, I am speaking to myself. It does not satisfy, Sata. but there is something, my God, if we labor in the kingdom of God, if we labor in God, then that is satisfying. It is like the and is the bread of life. It is the living water. Glory be to God. And if we labor, my God, faithfully, we will see indeed the glory itself. Hallelujah. Give ear and come. Listen that you may live. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord while he may be found. 
call upon him while he is near let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thought let them turn to the lord and he will have mercy on them and to our God for he will freely pardon I don't know about you today I don't know what the state of your mind or your life is but I want to extend an open invitation turn to the Lord and turn to the Lamb he will freely give glory be to God he will pardon you of your sins hallelujah 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 and I want to say another thing to the believer something God has been walking me has been impressing on my heart as we talk about the period of repentance yes bless you sister Vanessa um, Isaiah 55 1 to 3 as we talk about the period of repentance there are things in our lives as the believers that we need to my God and my King attend to. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, verse 94 and verse 20, hallelujah, glory be to God, that the devil or the enemy, they create mischief using a law, hallelujah. What does that mean? That means that they abide, they know the word of God and therefore they use that word to bind up my God and my King, king and to bind up the people of God. If it is my God that we are going to to reach to that stage where we experience, hallelujah, the fullness of the kingdom of God, then we ought to know, hallelujah, the laws of God, glory be to God. And how can we know the laws of God? By reading the word of God, hallelujah. And once we know the law of God and we know that we have transgressed it, then we need to repent, hallelujah. We need to go on our knees in in this period uh, and ask God, uh, oh Lord, every law, my God, uh, that is written in your book uh, that I have transgressed. Uh, ask the Lord God for mercy in this hour. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Sometimes we are given over because we have transgressed a law that we are not aware of. We need to get to a point where we have knowledge and where we're using that knowledge. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. That was a little aside. It's not very far off from the topic because the, the aim is to reach to the new Jerusalem. And if we are not ready, if we don't prepare ourselves if we don't avail ourselves of the redemptive power of the blood and of repentance, we will not make it in. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we say thank you. Father, we glorify you. We bless you. We magnify you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah, Father, as you have shown us in your word, my God, your intent, my God, your wish is to dwell among your people. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Father, the prayer of my heart tonight, ah, my God, is that we'll be found, my God, worthy for your presence, oh God, among us even now. Father, we also know that right now, at this point in time, those of us hallelujah who have named the name of christ we carry my god this treasure in earth and vessel we carry the treasure of the holy spirit we carry your presence in some way shape or form my god and my king lord i pray in this hour that if anything in our lives god is grieving your spirit my god we bow before the throne of grace and we ask for mercy 
mercy, God. Mercy, Lord. Have mercy on us, God. We confess, my God, our iniquities. God, we repent of every iniquity, Lord, of every law, God, that we have broken, of every law that we have transgressed. My God and my King, we bow before your God, the God of mercy, and we say, God, have mercy on us, God. Have mercy on us, God. Have mercy on me, God. Have mercy on me, God. Cleanse me, Lord God, of every unrighteousness, God. Cleanse me, my God, of every iniquity, God. Cleanse me, my God, of every transgression. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord God, let us always be um, mindful, God, that we carry a spirit within us, God. And therefore, God, this is the temple of the living God. We are not to soil it, my God, with the sinful nature in the name of Jesus every carnality within us, God, and every flesh burn away my God that thing that is within me that is not of you in the name of Jesus father I want to see you God I want to see you in the fullness of your glory God I want to see my God that new Jerusalem I want to experience my God that blessed hope so God if there is anything my God in my life that will prevent me my God from entering God Lord take it away my God you said in the book of Matthew I believe it is better my God for me to enter into the kingdom with one eye my God one foot my God one hand my God than to never enter hallelujah Hallelujah. Anything, my God, within us and within our lives, God, that will prevent us from entering in God. Take it away. Take it away. Hallelujah. Take it away in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we just give you praise. Father, we give you honor and we thank you, my God, for tonight. We bless your mighty matchless name. We pray, Heavenly Father, that as we have prayed, O oh God, that you will answer our prayers in the name of Jesus. Father, I lift up my God, everyone on this broadcast, and I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will manifest yourselves in their lives in a new way. I pray, my God, that your spirit will lead them into new understanding. My God, I pray that as the knowledge has been imparted upon them, O oh God, that this knowledge will not sit idle, Lord. Lord God, the Bible says that it is knowledge, my God, that the righteous uses to escape the trap of the wicked. Lord God, we pray that a response, my God, will come from the knowledge that we will not only know it, but that we will use what has been said in your word, my God, in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you will visit every household in the name of Jesus. Visit the children, the mother the father visit the situation in that house even now in the name of jesus my god i pray for your for mercy, God. I pray, Lord, for mercy. I pray, God, for a divine and sweet answer for every issue, my God, we have before you, even now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I will say thank you, my God. We say thank you, God, because before we had prayed, God, you answer. We say thank you, my God, because you know what we have need of. We say thank you, my God, for your great love and your kind compassion, my God. We say thank you, my God, for your mercy. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for your faithfulness. Thank you, mighty Father God, for bringing us thus far. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. We have just one more night. 
and that is such a profound night, we are going to be seeing that the last chapter of the book is bringing us back to the first chapter of the book. It is back to Eden. We will be seeing what Eden was like, glory be to God, and even more than what we had known in, in the beginning of, of, of the Bible, glory be to God. So I'll see you again tomorrow at nine. As per usual, if this uh, session has blessed your heart, please like and share it with somebody else. God bless you. God bless you. Have a good night and I'll see you again tomorrow.